You're watching Bye Bye Bloomington on CBS 10 WILM. Here's your host, Don Ansel. Matthew Ray, who is the youth pastor at Rock Church in Castle Hain, is our guest. He went, he and a, a friend of his, uh, a colleague from Rock Church, uh, went underground uh, as homeless for, uh, what was it, 60 hours? Uh, three days, I guess. Do the math, I don't know. Yeah, three <laughs> days. All right, so you, you got your sandwich and, and you went over to the Bercy House to see if you could get some, some, some place to sleep and what happened? Uh, we, we did get a place. Um, they had to uh, first confirm that we were who we said we were. So they How'd they do that? Well, they, they called the person that you list oh, you know, so as close as they can. So they called our wives and um, what did th how did called they called my wife and I wasn't really able to prepare her for that. So <laughs> Did she? Yeah, I quickly, as, as soon as I realized they were going to call her, I texted her real fast and said, you're about to get a call. Just say, yes, we are who, we, who they say we are. So. Um, well, what do they, how do they verify? They say, do you know so-and-so? Yeah, just do you know so-and-so? She said yes. That was the end of the conversation. They hung up. I so. see. Yeah. I got nervous for a minute. Our cover yeah. was going to be blown. But. Yeah. Oh, sure. It's my husband. What's he doing? <laughs> right. um, so how many people? All right. So tell us about you get into the Mercy House. How mm -hmm. many people are there? What is it? What's that experience like, that overnight experience? Uh, Mercy House is a, is a great facility for the guys. On North know. 4th, is it not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's about 40 bunk beds, probably 40 beds. just all in one room mm -hmm. with a TV in the corner. Um, the, I stayed on a bunk bed that was three bunks high. I've never stayed on one of those, and I was at the top one. <laughs> I slept, you know, like this right here with my leg hanging over the end. Wow. But um, it was nice to have a place to sleep, period, you know. And um, in the middle of the night, you have a, there's a symphony of noises, you know, of people. Um, yeah, all kinds of body noises happening in the middle right. of the night, keeping you awake. So right. um, I didn't get much sleep that night. But, but that was a unique experience. I oh, yeah, I definitely. Uh, was there conversation before you went to bed? Was it yeah, there's uh, all the guys are kind of to themselves doing all the things. One, one guy I noticed to the uh, in front of me had a, a, a huge Bible, just pulled it out and, you know, was reading. And I asked him, I was like, you know, do you read off? And he goes, every night. Every night I read, and um, you know you talk to several of these guys, and they're all having their own conversations. Some trying to sleep, some reading um, other books. So, I, I, and I don't know how if you can answer this, but I'm just so curious of what, to, if you can give us a sketch mm -hmm. of what life is like for someone who has nothing, mm -hmm. is homeless, and perceives few options for themselves. Yeah. Um, one thing I realized in this process is that it, it's hard to get a true grasp for what homelessness is um, when you know that at the end of three days you're going back to a, a warm home and a loving wife. You know what I mean? It's hard to truly get that mentality. Um, and so, because this was sort of an adventure, not it, your it life. Was. It was. You know? Yeah. It was. It was really seeing how they live, um, but obviously not taking on the full weight of what it means to be like them. Um, so it's tough. I mean, I, from what I saw and just thinking about the idea of not feeling like you have a purpose, not knowing that there's an end in sight to this lifestyle um, can be overwhelming, you know, I would, I would imagine. imagine so. Yeah. Um, did you give any thought to some of the reasons that people are get into being homeless? Oh, well, that's interesting because I think when people mention homelessness, they automatically categorize them all into one category. They automatically think they're crazy drunks, you know, with no motivation in life. Right. When the reality is, many of the people, I met one guy who's, his wife is the, um, the secretary to the CEO of Hasbro, the gaming company. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I met another guy whose brother is a successful actor who was recently, did some stuff in Glee, he was on Lost, <laughs> you know, and he, he was the brother who was there. And so it's, a lot of people are dealt bad cards, you know, a lot of people have just lost work in the economy. Um, yes, there's mental health issues, mental health issues. Yeah, there's plenty of that. Um, there's just, you know, there are the people with addictions and uh, all this stuff. There is addiction. There, oh, yeah. there, did you, did you come in contact with, with, uh, the drug culture during that, uh, um, time? Not a whole lot. Uh -huh. Um, there's not a lot of, I guess my question is, is there are a lot of drugs in the homeless environment. Yeah. I mean, there are some, but we didn't really come in, in contact with a lot. And I don't know if it's because some of the guys knew us and knew where we were from, and they just, you know, kept that So did they but blow your cover, the guys that knew you? Uh, some did, some didn't. Um, we weren't too concerned with trying to 
keep a cover. We, you know, we didn't right. mind people necessarily knowing what we were doing, um, and they were respectful of it. At first, we thought, are they going to be upset that we're doing this? You yeah, know, or, yeah. Uh, and they weren't at all. They were actually really excited that we would actually do that. So, did you, do you have do you have any handle on on if there's a difference in numbers and gender? Uh, we actually encountered primarily men. Yeah. Probably you, 99 percent I mean even I, yeah even around on the yeah, street whatever that doesn't that's not to say there's not right women out there but the Mercy House is specifically for <coughs> men for one so we saw a lot of them around there but and do, do you have any <coughs> idea how many people are dealing with that with homelessness in Wilmington in, in this region do you have any I don't have a good number I really don't I've heard <coughs> different numbers and so I don't I really don't hundreds know. yeah easily easily yeah Hundreds, easily hundreds, every day, every mm -hmm. night. Yeah. So uh, you woke up the next morning, or if you didn't sleep, you yeah, it was daylight. Away, it's time it. to start again. And yeah. wh what happened? What well, do you do? You have to get out of the Mercy House. You have to wake up at 5:30 and be out by six, um, unless it's you really have to be cold out outside. Out by six. Be out by six because they got to make up the beds and get things ready for the next night. Right. Um, and they don't let you stay there throughout the day. So you know, we got up. Um, we, uh, I don't remember. It was a hard. It was hard to get breakfast because I think it's the only. It was on a Saturday morning, and the only way to get breakfast was a bologna sandwich that was somebody handed out at their car and on Second Street. And uh, and I can't stand bologna, and that's that's another one of those times where I realized, you know what? If I really was homeless, I'd eat this bologna and wouldn't complain. But for me, I gave it to one of the other guys. I'm like, I can wait. You know? <laughs> and so uh, I waited. And Saturday was a, Saturday was a rough time to really get food. It was we uh, around that afternoon waited until. Um, they were handing out groceries, uh, Mother Hubbard's Cupboard is what it's called. And you went groceries. over there? Went over there, gave us a box of groceries. And, um, we went back to the library with all the other guys there, and their, their sense of generosity among each other is great. They'll go get really? groceries and come and just sell, just, just not sell them, sorry, hand it to each other. Say, hey, here's a box. Whoever wants whatever, come get it. And um, I mean, that was fascinating to me, to watch how generous they were. I mean, I had, There's I had a generosity of spirit among the homeless. Oh yeah, in your experience. I had one guy when he realized we were going to sleep outside mm -hmm. that night. Um, uh, one of the homeless guys offered me his coat um, because he thought I'd be cold, and even he knew that we were down there just experimenting, that I wasn't truly homeless, and yet he still was willing to give me his coat, and that touched him. That messed my heart up right there, because you know, I'm like <laughs> the sense of community among those guys is. Like nothing we truly understand here. You know? Take another break. Um, when we come back, how does the uh, low esteem of the public toward the homeless affect the homeless? We'll ask Matthew that and more when we come back. Stay with us.